You're watching VTV15, your source for local government, history, and the arts. Uh, we will not call the meeting to order right at this moment. We're still waiting on a, a one more member to arrive, uh, at which point we'll have a quorum to begin. So we'll just sit tight for the for the time being. But um, we should have Ashley here shortly, I think. So. All right. <laughs> Get the whip out now. Well, with the quorum present, let's call the uh, <coughs> September 12th, 2022 Parks Commission meeting to order. It is 5.01 and a half or so. Um, we, have, uh, we have a quorum present, um, and we'll begin with citizen communications, of which I believe we have some citizens with us this afternoon, possibly. Do we not? I, I don't believe anybody's wishing to communicate. Okay. Today. Well, I had, a, I had a, actually had a text message from someone who, who's, who couldn't tell who it was because it was just the, the phone number, who said, are you meeting at 5, and, and, uh, and is it an open meeting? And I said, yes, please come. And uh, I said, I intend to. So oh. um, I, I don't, uh, I don't know. Um, all right. Well, if no one wants to speak, um, we will we'll go ahead and move into the uh, into the meeting and take a look at the minutes of the last meeting from July 11th. They're attached to the uh, to the packet, and if there is a motion to accept or change those minutes, I'll entertain that right now. Uh, move to adopt the minutes as stated. Second. Second. A okay, motion and a second to adopt the minutes as presented. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. The minutes are approved, <coughs> and we'll move on into our... Uh, um, I've got future agenda items next, but we typically take that up at the end, I think. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's skip over E for the moment without objection from anyone. Uh, other business, and we'll begin with uh, Jason, who's going to introduce uh, Jody Miller. All right. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. Um, kind of what we started about a year, or maybe even a little bit less than that, uh, really trying to have all of our division heads um, that oversee a particular division within the department uh, come to you as the commission, and just that way you have an introduction. Um, that way you can get a face with a name. So if you're ever at the community center, uh, we have Jody Miller, who is here with us today. She's our community center manager. Um, I won't go into all the, all the great things. She can list all the great things that she does over there, but she really uh, facilitates all the day-to-day -day operations for the community center. Um, her and her team are there on the weekends. It's a seven-day operation, as I'm sure majority of y'all know. Um, so without further ado, I'll bring Jody Miller up to the podium. Applause, applause. Hi. <laughs> so I'm Jody, and I've been with the city for um, going on six years now. 
I originally started in the parks department as an administrative assistant, worked there for a few years, and then the community center asked, um, or had the opportunity for somebody to move over there. So I did, thought about it and decided, okay, yes, I'll go over there. Well, I started over there as an administrative assistant. Well, then a man, we're going through managers like crazy. So um, I decided that that was something I was interested in. So I stepped up and did that. And for the past couple years, that's what I've been doing. Um, probably three or four now. Um, it was kind of like walking into a twilight zone, to be honest, when I started over there. We didn't even have so much as like a copier or a scanner or anything that would work. So we've made a lot of changes. We've come up to date with, you know, processes and how things are working. And um, we actually stay very busy. I don't know, a lot of you know Microvera should be here, but um, we stay pretty busy with events, mostly on the weekends. During the week, we also have, um, you know, city functions and even people from out of town come in and like, you know, have other events throughout the week. So um, does anybody have any questions for me that you'd like me to answer? Any, any questions from anybody on the commission? Well, welcome to the uh, position, and we're happy to get to know you, and yeah. we're going to look forward to hearing from you from time to time about sure. and, and particularly Mike will love to. I know. It's fine. I talk to him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. All uh, Jody, right. Jody and her team do an exceptional job, and so uh, they are working on different processes, like she had mentioned. Um, so we're updating those. Uh, once we we're at the legal stage right now, correct? Yeah. So once we get all the policies back in from legal, we're going to pass that over to the city manager's office, see what they think, um, make sure that y'all get a look at it, so that way y'all can um, let us know any input that you may have, and then hopefully be able to bring that over to city council for formal adoption. Good deal. All right. Jason, I assume you want now to uh, move on to item E2, discuss the Riverside Dog Park. Yes, sir. Um, I'm trying to work some magic here. Um, right there, yeah. So I've got a lot of PowerPoints for this, e for this evening, so, um, but a lot of them are short. Um, <laughs> So one of the things that I wanted to bring up about the dog park, and I, I apologize, it's, um, it's kind of small as far as the verbiage goes on the screen, but uh, I really wanted to get clarification from the committee, uh, from sorry, from the commission, as to what we want to, how we want to memorialize Izzy. Um, Izzy Drain, as you remember, uh, was a young Girl Scout um, who kind of brought this project to our attention, if you will, uh, but really wanted to be involved with the dog park and some fundraising activities. Um, you know, after she unfortunately, you know, passed away, uh, her Girl Scout troop and her family has continued to, um, you know, uh, uh, get sponsorships and seek fundraising opportunities. And so they are continuing on with her vision that she had for the portion of the project that she wanted to complete, which was the dog park amenities. It's really the agility equipment, if you will, to be, to be a little more specific. Um, so what I wanted to do is give you, A, a quick overview of the dog park, because that's uh, the next project that we're going to be groundbreaking on. Um, and then also wanted to get clarification from y'all as to, again, what we wanted to and how we wanted to memorialize Izzy. Um, so really quickly, this right here, this picture in front of you, is a picture of the dog park itself. Um, uh, some minor modifications that you may or may not notice. Uh, you can see that there's there's a middle line basically in, in that area. So it separates uh, the, the large dog area from the small dog area. Uh, so the left hand side is a small dog area, the right hand side is a large dog area, and then we'll have a dividing fence that goes in between that. Um, the change that was made is you can see a, a trail system that goes uh, around both parks, if you will. Right in that middle area, kind of where that arrow is at, um, right here, the, the trail system you can see has been bumped out, is pushed away from the fence line. Uh, what we want to do is add a small, I say a small fence, but something like maybe like a 15 by 40 or 20 by 60, something like that. Uh, area for any stressed dogs. So any dogs that get stressed out or if there's any, you know, um, 
any unable bodies that are able to get, you know, may have difficulty getting to, to Fido right in a two acre piece of property, they could at least go to a, a smaller fenced in area and let the dog roam uh, that area. Or again, start getting stressed out, they bring them to that pen and kind of let them let the dog, you know, de-stress if you will. Get used and, and get acclimated to, you know, the surroundings. Um, so that was one of the biggest changes uh, that we had. But again, just the trail system that we have going throughout the small dog and the large dog side. Um, we do have some water features in there. The water features aren't specifically for the dogs uh, or any kind of dog amenities themselves, uh, but it's really just more for maintenance, right? So anytime that we need to clean, we'll have a hose bib uh, accessible there. That way we're not having to bring in trucks of water, et cetera. So the next slide that I'm gonna show you is gonna zoom in on that middle gray area, which is gonna be the entrance area. <laughs> Help if I use my clicker. So all this gray area is concrete. So everything that you see in the, in the darker gray is concrete. Everything in the, in the black or those black rectangles um, are gonna be those butter blocks or it's going to, it, it signifies some kind of um, you know, dog wash station, some kind of a rest area, et cetera. Uh, the smaller black dots that you see, uh, especially kind of where that half moon is at as you enter the park, are um, poles basically for the shade structure. Um, so we'll have a shade structure as you enter the park. There were some conversations that we had probably about three months ago about um, what kind of, you know, memorabilia or what kind of memorial we want to have for Izzy. Uh, I know in, in speaking with her family, uh, there's a, a kind of a maypole, if you will, or a very tall vertical pole on the right-hand side, which would be the large dog side. And they want to use those brick pa pavers and, and stack them vertically up that pole. Um, so I think that's going to help us reduce maintenance for sure. Um, but I wanted to, again, I wanted to, to kind of throw this back to the commission. I know we actually talked about like the name of it, and I know there was some, I think we ended up on Riverside Dog Bark, Bark Park right, or dog park, it was, it was a really long-winded, if you will, kind of, kind of name to it. Um, so again, just wanna make sure that we're okay with the name, and then also wanna follow up with any kind of, you know, extra memorial that we wanna have for Izzy. Uh, I know at one point we talked about actually having like a sign or something that went over the entrance of it. Um, we could still potentially do that. You see the two, two dots kind of uh, just below the half circle in those two smaller square areas, they're just to the outside of that. That would signify those out, outer poles for the shade structure. And I've already talked with our uh, designer and he could definitely you know, add some verbiage to the top of that. So if we wanna put you know, in memory of Izzy or, um, or, or, or nothing at all, I mean, we can do that. Uh, do we wanna have a plaque there for Izzy? Um, I know that was talked about at one point too. Um, so I, I just really wanna get some clarification, a little bit of guidance on what actually you want to see out there uh, to contribute to Izzy's memorial. Jason, if, if I remember correctly, when she made her presentation here, wasn't her idea to name it Bark at the Park, just something short and sweet? Um, so would something like Izzy's Bark at the Park? Yeah, I mean, we could... I, th I thought that's what her presentation alluded to. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I, I'd have to pull that up really quickly and see what it was. Um, that way I'm not lying to you. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we can definitely have Izzy's name in it. That was another conversation, too, that we didn't really, I don't think, really hashed out is, do we want her name in the naming itself? Right. Um, like Izzy's dog park? That's, right. I'm, right. Going to, I'm going to Izzy's dog park. Right. Yeah. That's a, I think if we're going to... I, that's an idea because if we're gonna, you know, do something in her memory, that's that's pretty significant. Um, I also like that. I love the way those like bronze statues look. Mm. I don't know if that's uh, too much, but you know, do you know which ones I'm talking about? Those real pretty uh, bronze yeah. statues. I like the way those look. Those are just some ideas. What did we? We we took some action on this a while yes. back. What did we? What exactly did we did we do? <laughs> so yeah, that's a good question. Um, so it was with the naming. It was, um, and I, I, I think Jessica's looking for the, the actual naming of it. But uh, we had we had basically voted on the naming of it, and it being the Riverside um, 
do you remember, Jessica, what it was? It was Riverside Bark Dog Park, if I'm not mistaken. There was a lot of discussion at that meeting yeah. that resulted in whatever it was we came up with. And I, I just, well, we, as we, a starting point, I'd, it, I'd, I'd kind of just, I'd be more comfortable kind of knew where we were then if we. Uh, sure. Um, sure. Jessica, can you pull those, those records from um, a couple months back? So while Jessica's looking for it, I know we had conversations about pavers um, actually being on the ground, and then we we had conversations with the uh, with Izzy's family afterwards, and they wanted them to be more vertical, and so that's the reason why we're looking at that maypole versus actually putting them on the ground. So that was a change that took place basically right after that meeting that we had that we had kind of come to a conclusion. Yes, let's put pavers on the ground. Well, and I think um, we I seem to remember talking about that, and that seemed. I mean, my recollection is that everybody thought that was a pretty good idea too, really. That, okay. I think you told us that might happen. So okay. the, I, I remember the concept of, I mean, that o obelisk is out there, right? And so mm -hmm. you just take those pavers and, and stack them around it, right? Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. That's order them in there or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, sir. I think on something like this, uh, this is what Izzy wanted at first the way she was visualizing it visualizing this and if we just put it you know just stating from a morals type things if we just have a name Izzy's dog park uh, a lot of people aren't going to know who Izzy is and I think there needs to be something like a memorial maybe like the entrance of it maybe say for example like a granite stone and then the plaque on it because okay. people will know then who she who she was right you know what she stood for and instead of saying Izzy, they could think, well, it's some old person or whatever that came up with this donated money. Right. But then they see it's a young child who had a dream that made it come true. And it talks about her, maybe a little plaque with her, you know, in memory of, and then it has her name. And okay. then they could be supporting also the Girl Scouts. So when people read that, they say, you know what, that's a 13 or 10 year old kiddo that did that. Right. And it would set examples for young ladies also. Sure. That anything is possible. There's that picture of her with her dog that she had in her presentation. Maybe if we could get that where that is engraved on something that is, you know, where it's about the height of what a 16 year old would be. And then, you know, that feeds into where those bricks are going to go since they're going to go vertical okay. as we enter. If, if she could have maybe something there. And then that tells the entire story of her, you know, that she presented to okay. us, raised the funds. And then in memory of her, they continued to raise the funds, like tell the whole story, you okay. know, as it goes down, like have her picture and then it go down. You know, kind of about it. So we're thinking something more on the large dog side and not necessarily in the front or, or on the, of the entrance. Yeah, I guess that's kind of what my question was. You know, Jason just mentioned those two stanchions in the front for the shade structure would be a place where you could mount a, a you know, I, I don't know, There's, I'm sure there's a maximum size, but you could probably mount one that would contain the information that you need to. They're, they're certainly strong enough to, to do that. You could put that right there. And the good thing about that is it would be, right in the front when you in, entered either side, wouldn't it? Is mm -hmm. that how that would work? That'd be cool. Right. Correct, yes sir. Jason, that way, you point I, I love that? your idea about saying a little bit about who Izzy was. Because mm -hmm. you know, my, my thing is right now, like National Monument was like in DC. Mm -hmm. Most people just look at things, but they don't know what it stands for or what it is until they start reading it and then they see a statue or so right. they, they can pinpoint things. And something like this, I think will give a lot of young ladies that great self-esteem and, and a good role model there of what she did at such a young age. Okay. And she made the impossible become possible. So. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So I was saying, can you point on this map where we're talking about? Yeah. Please. So, right here, these two, these okay. two dots are the outer poles. <coughs> um, you have the, the, the entryway that is going to be going in, into here. So you would have, um, that would be at the front, I guess, if you will. You could put a, a, a sign right there, so as you as you entered the dog park, you could see. You could do it on both sides, I suppose. You could, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, and if it's high enough, I mean, we could we could do it horizontally, just across, just it. up higher, you know. Um, but uh, so Jessica found some some notes from uh, the the last meeting that we had conversations about this. So the name was Riverside Bark Dog Park. Um, there was conversation about having some kind of a small memorial or plaque. So it sounds like the memorial is something that we still want to move forward with, um, or at least some kind of a plaque that states 
you know, who she was or a picture of, of her and, and kind of where um, the project came from, right? And then we talked about the pavers uh, going on the ground uh, versus vertical. So those were the three, those were the three comments that we have here um, from Jessica's notes during that meeting. It was Riverside Bark with a B. Yes, sir. Riverside Bark with a B. The dog Park. Dog Park. And then Dash in memory of Izzy Drain. Oh. So that's a very, and that's, you know, it's, it's a very long, you know, park name, if you will. Um, so I, it, yeah. <laughs> this, is just, this is just my, um, my final input is I, I like it because she really got the conversation going, even though there were other people kind of uh, working on it. Um, I think she got in front of the right people and started getting the conversation really um, going. And if I think if you want to have some memory of somebody, you know, um, go all out. And so in my opinion, I'd like it to be Izzy's dog part with your little plaque in the front, kind of like they have in front of the splash pad at Ethel Lee. Mm -hmm. There's a little splash pad with the commissioners are, are the names. And uh, that's just um, what I'm thinking because... Izzy's dog park, just like you see, like that's the splash pad. They're different names and things like that to to memorialize or uh, do that for other people. So, and I think that it's just a catchy name, also. So if it perhaps seems. it wasn't for her, that'd be like a catchy name, anyhow. Um, so those are just uh, my thoughts, my final thoughts on it. Thank you, guys. Well, good. No, I, I, I'm I'm looking at what we did last time, and I'm I'm kind of scratching my head because I don't recall how we got Izzy's name out of it, but there's, it seems like that kind of came up and we discussed it, and I don't remember. Does anybody remember what? We went off of what she had named it yes. as right. Jason's in her email presentation. From, Jason's email from 427 of this year uh -huh. says naming the dog park. Izzy wanted to name the park Bark Park. Uh-huh, okay. It says we could come up with another name for the park and underneath place in memory of Izzy Drain. Izzy's Bark Park. You know. I like shortening it to Izzy's Bark Park or like Izzy's that. or Izzy's huh? Dog Park. Okay. I'd rather have her name in there than the Bark, but I mean, if we could do Izzy's Bark Park, I mean, we have Ethel Lee, all the other parks. To Jason's point, I mean, to Justin's point, was they're named. So right. right? Izzy's, Izzy's Bark, Bark Park. Park. Do y'all like it? Yeah. I like it. What do y'all think? What do you think, Izzy's Jason? Bark Park? I think before too, we we didn't know if we could. It, or should name it after her because remember her family came to speak and then right. we were trying to find out if it would be acceptable to do that. So I assume we have permission to do that now. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I had conversations with them about it, it, it didn't really seem like it was yeah, one way or another. I mean, as long as she was memorialized in some way, shape, or form, I think they were they were happy. Um, but it, they weren't they weren't pushing to have Izzy's name on the the title of the park, if you will. Um, but that's. So Izzy's dog bark, or what do you think? I, Izzy's I like, dog I like park? bark park. I do. Bark <laughs> park? Izzy's bark park. Her wishes Izzy's too. bark park. I have a okay. question. Izzy's bark park. I have a question, though. So with regards to online searching and SEO and all that good stuff, right. so if we exclude the word dog from it, is there, I mean, you can still, people can still find it, yes? Right. I, I'm, sh I'm sure. Sure there's a way? Um, I, I think I think you would want to have either dog or bark or something related to mm -hmm. that because most people are going to put in Riverside Dog Park. Right. Are you I mean, are you going to search? Yeah. Or, or, sorry, or Dog Park in Victoria. Right. You're going to search just Dog Park. Right. right. So as long right. as it pops up on everything, and it will if it's in the body of the copy of description of the park online, right. it'll still show up. So I'm good with Izzy's Bark Park. Mm -hmm. Bark Park. Izzy's I like Bark it. Park. Motion. I like it. Okay. Motion to that effect. Okay, I'll second it. Or Izzy's no. Bark Park. Mm -hmm. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Or, Aye. 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 Anybody Aye. opposed? Awesome. Thank you all. Um, so just one more clarification question. Do we still want to have a plaque somewhere, right, I think, with, with I think kind of the information nice that yes. you yes. mentioned? So this is aftermath of what's happened. Okay. I think it'd be great to... Yeah, for example, like we were talking about the other places that are named. Right. Uh, I don't know much about them, but I know they probably um, had some kind of impact on Victoria. Okay. Uh, you know, the different names, whether it be uh, Ted B or Ethel Lee or in, in 
or uh, what are the splash pads names, you know? Right. Um, I, the significance of it to me is just the name. So okay. I think a plaque is important. Okay. Do we do we need to make a motion on that or just? No, no, no. Okay. That's fine. I, I just I just I wanted agree. to get clarification because those three things, the name, the pavers, and the plaque were, were what, you know, Jessica had. So I just wanted to make sure we're all good. Um, because what I wanted to do is is, fin is follow up with uh, the fact the fact that Mike said the doors were locked outside. Oh, yeah. No, no. Um, Some public meeting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can we stick can a you, beer can in there? Or, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Go <laughs> um, <laughs> get one on the car. <laughs> yeah, come on down at five o'clock. We're good. <laughs> yeah, I had it going into the bottom. <laughs> Went through the mail slot. <laughs> no, I called Kim and she said I thought she was here. Oh, yeah, no. She said, where are you? I said, I'm outside the door. I said, lock the yes, sure is. Can get in. I've been at it. We've been there for about 15 we're, minutes. We're getting, we're getting that fixed right now. Uh, Izzy Park, um, not Izzy's. So you have what you need so, since of the... Yeah, so we, we have everything we need for the dog park. Um, just so everybody's aware, the dog park went ahead and, and went out <coughs> formally for bid um, today. Um, so it went out today. We'll have it opened up for the next... Or we'll have it open for bid for the next two weeks. Um, and then we'll um, we'll open bids on the 28th. So um, hopefully we have a contract going to council in October, and uh, then the project can commence shortly thereafter. And is the design already final, or, or is the, the the people taking on the project going to also add their own things to it? No, this is final at this okay. point. Yes, sir. But that's all I have for the dog park. I have one quick question. Yes, sir. It seems like one other thing that we talked about, and, and if, I, if I'm just misremembering, please tell me, because that's entirely possible. But in terms of, of, of uh, sort of making, uh, communicating there, we talked about engraving the butter blocks or something. Did that, something that we didn't, is that? We did talk about that, yes, that sir. not something that, that's um, doable? I don't know. I, I think I think the cost went up ah, okay. on, on some of that. So okay. um, we're, right. right now we're, like I said, we just put it out to bid. So we're going to look at what those numbers come in at, and if there's any kind of addendums that or, or modifications that we need to make afterwards, we can we can do some change orders. Okay. Well, do, do you see this plaque thing that we're talking about, which is as also sort of the <coughs> the, the sign on the outside, or is, there, or is there a separate signage that would be? That would be incorporated somehow or some place. So signage, as in like the rules, or like just a like no, no, the, like a sign that, that that would that would probably say Izzy's Bark Park, you know, somewhere near the entrance or where, where you could see it from the road or something like that. Just some. Uh, is, is there any? Yeah. I, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to touch base with our consultant and see if we can. A get something that would span that that entryway. Uh -huh. um, that way we could have the the name right yeah. there instead, and, and then, then we can the... add a plaque separately yeah. to to both locations. Okay. Um, if we can't do that, then yes, sir, we'll find some way to um, have some kind of a signage or, or something like that closer to the roadway, so that way you could actually <coughs> distinguish what that fenced area is. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Okay. Anything more on the mm -mm. Bark Park? <laughs> good good work. Um, item E3 is next. Discuss the Riverside Park Children's Playground features. Okay. Um, whoops. I'm breaking stuff. Um, so one of the projects that we have coming up in this fiscal year, uh, this upcoming fiscal year, which starts October 1, is uh, Riverside uh, Park Children's Playground area. And if some of you all don't know where that's at, it's literally across the street from our Parks and Recreation office, uh, right next to the pavilion. Um, we have been working, a little bit of background information, we have been working um, to look at all of our playgrounds that we have throughout the entire city and starting to put them on a rotation. So that way um, we can have those, you know, by the time we come back around to the, to the very start, it would have been 15, 17 years or so um, from the last, you know, new, re newly refurbished playground. Um, so we added Riverside Park into this year's budget. 
Uh, it's a heavily used area. There's tons of kids that go over there. And quite frankly, I mean, the park is a little outdated when it comes to the playground structure, even the surfacing material that's on it. So we put money in the budget. Um, we had gone through the budget process, which, um, you know, luckily and, and thankfully everything had stayed in there when it comes to this project. Um, at the same time, we also want to be inclusive to everything that we do and make sure that everything has adaptive play. Um, we got contacted by a local parent that had um, her child uh, in a wheelchair, and she was asking, you know, what can I do to, you know, help you get the playgrounds more accessible to, to children in, in wheelchairs? Um, and I said, well, hey, guess what? We're working on this project. This is what's, you know, kind of, this is what we're looking at. Um, coincidentally, we got contacted by another family um, that actually was through Make-A-Wish Foundation. And so the Make-A-Wish Foundation, um, you know, grants wishes to children who are terminally ill or who have gone through a terminally ill type of disease. Um, this young man uh, went through, um, went through everything that he went through and he's, he's, on a, he's on a great road right now to recovery. But one of his things was that he, he literally drew a playground for an inclusive play area because a lot of his friends that he had at the time uh, were in wheelchairs and they were going through some of the same struggles that he was going through. Uh, so Make-A-Wish granted him a wish and his wish was to have an inclusive playground in Riverside Park or I'm sorry, just to have an inclusive playground. Um, so it kind of connected all the dots, and, and so we ended up meeting and uh, started working with a uh, playground manufacturer and design company. And so what I want to show you is about two months' worth of uh, meetings that we've had with not only uh, the family uh, of the young kid, um, but also with the playground manufacturing company and designer. Um, so I want to get your input on what you think about this. Um, that way I can provide any kind of updates or information to the design team themselves. So kind of going back a little bit, uh, again, this is in uh, Riverside Park in the children's playground area. Uh, to the north or to the very top, you'll see a, a thick white line and then a thin white line. Um, everything above that or to the, to the top of that is the parking lot in Riverside Park playground area. Um, if you look kind of where the Y is at in the sidewalk and you go all the way down, that's the gazebo that we have. Uh, just to the south of that would be the pavilion and just to the east of that or to the right of that would be uh, the restroom area. So what we're looking at doing is um, the current area has, you know, three or four different areas or spaces uh, for, for children to play in of all different ages. Um, JJ's theme, the, the young boy's theme, uh, was uh, Peter Pan. And so thus, the whole renderings that you'll see here have to do with Peter Pan, with Captain Hook's ship, with the Lost Boys uh, tree uh, hangout spot. Um, but I just wanted to give you a quick aerial of what it would look like. Um, we, we do anticipate removing a few trees uh, that are there within Riverside Park playground, or Children's Park uh, area, but um, overall we would keep majority of the large established trees. And go, go ahead. Sorry, what about the, the swings? The swings would stay. Oh, okay. So, um, so very good, very good point. Thank you, sir. Uh, so that left rectangular green area, that the lighter shaded area, is where the rocks are at currently, and then the swing set. And none of that would be touched. All of that would stay the same. So what would basically be removed is everything else on the inside. So this replaces what's there now, right? Correct. Yes, okay. sir. I'm sorry, I get that now. So the pirate ship. Um, has a lot of different, um, a lot of different little just fun things to do with it. Um, one of the really cool things about this company is they they can really make anything come alive, um, and so they they put a lot of uh, work into all of their uh, moldings that they have. And so you can see on the right hand side, there's a purple tail and a yellow tail. He wanted to have mermaid fins coming out of the water, um, and so the blue area would be the surfacing material, but also be you know, the water. Um, there's definitely accessible areas with the ramps. Uh, that little boat on the right-hand side that's that's got some yellow to it. 
is um, a, a rocking boat. And so you can literally roll the wheelchair all the way up to it and onto it. And then whoever is in the chair can, can you know, rock the boat, if you will. So just another view of it. Um, he, went, he liked the fishing pole, so <coughs> he definitely had to keep the fishing pole in there. Um, one thing that I didn't mention to you while, uh, while you're looking at this picture, um, we had money set aside. We know that it's not going to be the full amount of what's going to be needed for this project, but Make-A-Wish, is that's where they kind of come in. So they'll step in and they'll start uh, helping fundraising and gaining sponsorships or, or fundraising uh, monies for this project. Just another... Um, just another look at it. Um, this company does a really good job with um, using all the spaces that they have available to them. So if you go underneath some of the planks or some of the decking, uh, they may be uh, a couple of play areas down there as well. This is a spinner um, that you can see in the in the rendering. There's a couple kids that are inside of the spinner. One of them is is in a wheelchair, um, and so. Um, you know, they can, anybody can, can turn that thing, if you will, as, in, as fast as they want to go to. And just another look at the, uh, the mermaids. Um, so they pay, again, the, the design team that we're working with pays uh, attention to detail. And so you can see the green, uh, kind of the green humps or the green bumps, if you will, that are in between those rocks. That's a, those are crocodiles. Crocodile. Yeah. So that's the, the TikTok, right? Um, everything that they do is hand painted and, and so it definitely, they have a lot of detail with their product. It's a really, really cool product. And then this is the uh, smaller playground area. So uh, that large area or the, the big ship that you just saw, that's a um, five to 12 year old play area. And this would be a two to five. And so this is sticking with the uh, kind of the, the same theme, the Lost Boys theme, where you have, uh, you, I don't it's kind of hard to see, but um, on the left-hand side where you have the crabs that are crawling up, um, right underneath that decking is basically a tree base. And so inside of that tree base, you have the ability to climb up that and get onto the, the upper platform or um, just kind of hang out in there because he wanted to see... Uh, he wanted to see it kind of glow underneath, and so they can do some different things to where the lighting would make it glow. But as you can tell, I mean, um, some of the railings that they have look like twigs. I mean, that's intentional, um, just really trying to be a little bit more nature-based with, with some of their uh, themes as well. And so there are some different kind of play components that are that are on this uh, playground. So you can see the ring a bell. Um, those things can be um, changed out at any given time. Those are literally called play panels. Um, and we, if one gets damaged, we can change it out for something different. Um, yeah. So what do y'all think about it? It's neat. It's neat. I think yes. it blends into the environment. Yeah. Question, Jason. I, I don't know. Yes, maybe I missed it. Uh, yes, sir. I didn't see any swings out there. Do you have put any swings out there? Yes, sir. So uh, that far left-hand side of this picture, where the the kind of that light green rectangle is at, um, mm -hmm. that's where our current swing sets are. And then we have the rock walls that are right next to that. Those aren't going to change. Those would stay there. You still going to have the the uh, what do you call the patio there and the the restrooms? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing else would change. You're going to build to the, the right, to the to the left of it, right? Yes. Are they going to replace the surface of that area, though, where the swings are? Um, not as of yet. Okay. I mean, we can we can look at that and and um, so with these with this company that we're working with, sir. So they're they're designing it. Once we get out to bid, we can we can add that to the bidding aspect of it and make sure that they get that replaced as well. Then they uh, then we make the uh, park out there by the uh, <laughs> park next to Walmart. Did we make that? Uh, Handicap accessible as well. Yes, sir. Yeah, I yes, remember sir. that uh, when we when they started doing that project, they were going to put some uh, uh, swings out there and for, for the uh, handicap. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I I did like the way the park is now. Is that big ship? It has many components to it. The three levels you go up, mm -hmm. and um, and but and that's kind of lower. But I still like it. But one thing I do notice is the lack of shade above the. 
above the playground, like on the other um, wheelchair unit at Elsa Lee, right. they made it a point to put the the shade parts in in areas. I got you. And I think it really helps out a lot because um, I'm sure you, as you see, working over there during the the hotter days, nobody plays right. during the day. <laughs> I don't know if that, if that could be something they incorporated. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point because that that came up during our conversation this past week, and um, we were looking at where some of the ramps are at, um, so that you can kind of see almost where in the middle, um, kind of where that decking is. I'm sorry, it's hard to point. Uh, right here, kind of right right in this area. Yeah, uh, and there's some opportunities for some shade uh, that could be in there. So. Um, while we have been we have been talking about that, so I think they're going to just try to find and on this next time that we meet with them next month, uh, really trying to kind of fine tune those those shaded areas or opportunities for shade structures. Yeah, because I feel like it's if we're designing for the future. It feels like it's just getting hotter every year. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then feast or famine, it's either dry or like soaking. So any other comments or suggestions or? The article you signed us up for online, the Parks and Recreation publication that we get, they mm -hmm. did one that was kind of on all-inclusive playgrounds. I'll, I'll re-forward it, but it has a lot of stuff like this in there as well. Awesome. Well, I can tell you, uh, Landscape Structures, they're 100% um, they're employee-owned company, um, and they have a couple people who are wheelchair-bound. Um, that work for them. And so um, I know there's there's a lot of testing that goes on and, and a lot of suggestions that are made by by um, by that demographic. And so I know I know that's that's really what landscape structures is focused on is inclusive play. Um, so yeah, that'd be great. I mean if you could forward that article over that that would be awesome. Like the same things, it's awesome though. It'd be good. So Jason, with regards to the Make a Wish Foundation, which is mm -hmm. great partner partner with do, is there a minimum or maximum dollars that they're looking at committing um no they i had talked with them about um you know just the the pricing of this of this project we're not even there yet and i just have a number <laughs> and i said hey just be ready for a number like this and um they didn't really seem to have an issue with it uh, a lot of what make a wish does from what I've been told is um, they partner with Walt Disney and so a lot of the wishes that they typically see are hey I want to go to Disney World or I want to go to you know somewhere like that and so they have they have a partnership with them in that regard yeah. um, but she said something like this isn't isn't you know unheard of uh, but they would go out and, and do fundraising but no ma'am there was no max or min there's definitely some people involved in this community that will want to help with fundraising that I mean, it will benefit their children and they will jump aboard. So I think that you'll get some community fundraising as well. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, we, we even took a look at the sidewalk area and, and I mean, quite frankly, if we're gonna be redoing all of this to make it like this, um, there's gonna be some concrete work too that we're gonna need to be looking at and, and all the donations and, and donor plaques and, and pavers that are out there, we're gonna have to figure out what exactly we're going to do with those. Um, definitely want to keep them on site, but how do we move forward with them? And I'm going to add to that, if you're going to redo it, then let's look at the, the water fountains or water fountain shade structures, like you already mentioned, and then seating for both, for everybody. Okay. I, I love the water fountains, you know, because that's just, a, I, that's something that used to be so good. Uh, you're running around, you're playing, and you have the water there to drink. I just think that's that's important. I don't know. I know we had COVID and all that, uh, but I don't think the the exact plan moving forward just to, should be to start getting away with all water fountains. And in my opinion, I, I think they're a great addition to the park. You are. Agreed. Yeah, and, and one of the things that I had asked the uh, design team is is in the mermaid tails, could we make a, a misting station out of it? So we can't do like a splash pad, but could there be a mister, kind of to your point, um, you know, it's hot out there. Could they just run through, a you know, down here. push a button and then run through the tail or something like that where it's yeah. just got water coming out of it. So um, we say yes to that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a splash pot over here sometime soon anyways, right? Uh, we hope so. Okay. So, yeah. Water's incorporated. Um, one, one thing, I've got just two or three more slides for you really quickly on this one. So you can see at, uh, at where the concrete kind of V's, if you will, at the top. Um, 
right there in that green space, we have a, a, a large like marble plaque that says children's playground. Um, we were trying to figure out what we could do with the entrance of that. And so the design team just gave me some, some examples of what they've done in other communities. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to pass this along to y'all and see if there is anything that y'all kind of gravitated towards uh, more than in anything else. I think that's kind of neat. We that could one. do something with the pavers too. Um, I really wish they would have gave me the one that they actually showed me. Um, I'm not too fond of this one. It's just me. Um, I kind of like the second one. I like the second. This one's not as fun. Like from a kid perspective, when you walk up on the other one, you would be like, right. oh, this is cool. This one right here. Right. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't necessarily have to be like this. So I just, again, just wanted to throw out some ideas for you. Um, we are way, way at the very beginning stages of this. So um, just something to chew on. I didn't, I didn't expect any, you know, uh, any kind of solid recommendations on what kind of entryway that you wanted. But I think um, the second one kind of gives the children a sense of imagination and creativity when they go into the Peter Pan place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that. I think that there opens up their eyes a little bit. Yeah. I like how that tree's sitting against that, that playground, like somebody could climb. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah I would go I, play there. I, I'm not going to lie. I saw that too. I was like, how come they didn't add that in ours? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, cool. Those I, are remarkable. Um, Those are mm -hmm. all great. I, mean, I appreciate the feedback. I'll, I'll definitely get, um, so we, we're, we're meeting once a month right now. And so whenever we meet in the next three weeks, I will um, let them know some of the comments that, that y'all made. And um, we'll go from there. I'll continue to give you an update. That's awesome. Okay. All right, item E4 is discuss dates for a commission workshop. Okay, break out your calendars, your phones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I I didn't, uh, I, again, I don't expect uh, any kind of um, uh, solid answer today, but I did want to bring this up to the commission. Um, so this year we met in March and kind of went over everything with the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Uh, during that workshop, um, I had mentioned to you that I would like to have a yearly workshop with, with the commission. Um, I'd prefer to have that meeting before we have our budget submitted, which would be mid-February. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out to the commission right now. Uh, is there any dates uh, that you see in the next three to four months uh, that you would like to go into a workshop? Uh, I know the end of the year can get a little bit hectic at times, especially with the holidays. Um, so I don't know if we want to have the first meeting in January um, be the workshop and not have a, have a meeting. As a reminder, the workshop would take place of this meeting. Are you looking at a Saturday or any particular date? Uh, I'm good with any particular date, but it's, it would probably be another half-day workshop. So, I mean, I, I would just leave that up to the commission and what, what you prefer. I think a half-day? I would think so, because I would like to go over the budget, um, talk about maybe a few of the projects that we have, and then get an update on the uh, priorities from the commission off the master plan. We shoot maybe for like January the 21st, because uh, the, the previous weekend is going to be um, MLK is on that Monday, so y'all will probably have off. So you'll probably have a three-day weekend. When is the budget? Oh, y'all have TAF? The first, okay, they the have TAF. Monday of the month? <laughs> Uh, budget, no, time? budget will be due uh, mid-February. Okay. Okay. Probably want to so. give yourself a couple of months of planning then for that. Okay, so you want to go uh, earlier? On something like that, if you look at November and December, usually like the second week, everybody's trying to make plans already for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And then Christmas time, that's like shot because everybody's <laughs> in a different world. Yeah. Early uh, November? I would say, you know, for me, I would say maybe like the first, you know, if you want to do this rapidly, because that way you got plenty of time for budget planning. Probably like late October, November, but then October is the Halloween thing. December. I mean, we could look at First changing the, our our commission meeting in November yeah. if you want. I mean, how, again, just whatever that whatever y'all prefer. That commission meeting replace. Yes, sir. Our planning. Yes, sir. Okay. Early in November. Do y'all want to do that? 
Is that where you got enough room? We get your We're still talking your about budget? like a Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. I can't November fifth. Uh, I'm out of I'm out of town. Uh, November twelfth, as of now, does 12th. that work for y'all? November twelfth works for me. I could do the twelfth, I think. Anytime after five or any weekend. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll make it. <laughs> November twelfth, we'll shoot for that. Okay. That's Veterans Day weekend. Are y'all okay with that? <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. November 11th. No, that's, I'm, I'll, be, I'll be on vacation. That's Veterans Day. Huh? Yep. That's Veterans Day. Friday is. We have the parade usually on Saturday, right? Mm. The day of. Hmm? They do it on the day of. Yeah. On Friday? Uh -huh. um, it'll when be people on, are downtown? It'll be the it's actual. It's events thing. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about Friday or Saturday? Saturday. Saturday, Saturday the 12th. I don't know if y'all are trying to keep it in November. There's the 19th as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can make the night. I can do the night, the 12th or the 19th. I think I can do either one. The 19th is out for me, so the 12th would be probably the best. 12th. <laughs> I just cut my vacation short. If not, you do what, November? Huh? 19 yeah. November? Or? I spent November in Venice weekend in Branson. Yeah. Do we, um, yeah, the only other date that I see that may work would be, but that's rolling into December. That'd be December 10th. That'd be the Saturday prior to our typical Monday meeting. That's, do y'all want to try and shoot for October? Does anybody have any bad days in October? I do. I'm gone. You're gone I, in October? Okay. October's no good for her. October. For mm -hmm. I like your day, 21, yep. January. Maybe you can do you want January 14th? I mean, would January work for y'all? I mean, I'm, I'm not too worried about budgetary items. We can get so those things. Okay yeah, we can get those things. 14th January. January, yeah. Squared okay. away pretty quick. 14th of January. Hang on a second. Let me see. <laughs> You can bring a cake and celebrate my birthday. Fourteenth <laughs> of 14th? January. Yes, sir. I think. Justin, would that work? Yeah, I, can, I think I could do the fourteenth of January. January. That's probably the only weekend I can do it on January. January. in January. Yeah, yeah, but that is MLK weekend. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, that is half that weekend, isn't it? <laughs> so what about on the twenty-first? Wow. So we're gonna have to do this back in. Oh. I've got a trial on 23rd. This okay. the, the, the next week, I got a. What about meeting. December 3rd? I, what? 28th works. What is it? Oh, it's Christmas, right? December 3rd, that's a parade. That's a parade. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're going to be tied up. Already. I think January would be the best bet. I mean, I mean, we could still do it. It's just, it would just be me and me and you that would be out. And what about January the 7th? What about that? It's not really New Year's. I could do that. You want to spend the first Saturday, Saturday with us? Yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Hmm? Bring in the new year right. <laughs> Everybody works on a weekday, so Saturday's a good. Okay. <coughs> 7, 14, or 21. <laughs> Make, pick a choice. That's so we can celebrate. We'll bring January 7th? <laughs> huh? No, the 5th. Oh, the 5th. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me say that's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Does that work for y'all? 7, 14, or 21. <laughs> Seems seventh January seventh, January seventh. Okay, we're gonna have to bring some birthday cake and <laughs> what kind of presents you want? <laughs> this is. I just want to see everybody. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Maybe fajitas. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> and maybe breakfast. Hey, J what, what Justin, breakfast did? tacos. No, there you go. <laughs> Mine is eighteen, so but I give everybody off anyway on eighteen. <laughs> Uh, Commissioner Keeling, is the seventh work for you? The seventh? So I can put it down. Just in Urbano. No. Okay. The meeting. So it sounds like <laughs> January 7th is a consensus, and uh, Jessica will send out a calendar invite, and we'll get that all on the calendars for everybody. January 7th, probably the same time as we did last time, 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Is that location. okay with y'all? Yes, sir. Yes. Same location. Parks and Recreation Conference Room.
Cool. All right. Well, appreciate it. Thank y'all. Okay. So um, item E5 is discuss an update on commission priorities from the parks master plan. This from our last um, yes, sir. workshop? Yes, sir. So um, I'm still trying to find a better way to present this to everybody because uh, I know <coughs> what, what I ended up doing was take the, uh, the, the goals that we had and then broke them down into the objectives that we had throughout the master plan. The ones that we had identified in the workshop back in March, um, you'll see those signified in, in this document um, with that lighter text, if you will. So the first one was action 1.1.1 was parkland level of service. It was to utilize acreage and proximity standards in the master plan for minimum parkland service levels. Um, so we're currently working at 1.11 and 1.12 kind of go hand in hand. Um, so we're actually working with, uh, well, we're having conversations with individuals on pieces of property throughout town. Uh, one of them that would be in the centrally located area uh, where we currently have a gap in service on parkland. Um, so we're looking and, and, and trying to be intentional in, in, um, in how we go about in acquiring some of the parkland. Um, so we are, we are continuing to work on that and uh, continuing to have conversations with throughout the community um, with different organizations. Um, I think I mentioned to y'all last time that we had conversations with uh, a neighborhood that was also wanting to have a, a park in their piece of, in, the, in their neighborhood area. That was actually in a, a service gap. Um, the thing with that is that um, it's, it's, it's almost like an HOA and so everybody has to deed over their, their portion of that park or that green space for us to be able to take it over. So um, we're still working with a couple neighborhoods and again, a couple of organizations and just finding those gaps and um, potential future parks. The trail uh, network, uh, Action 1.1.3, 1. 1. Uh, level of service is to expand the trail network and increase trail access within one half mile of, of individuals. Um, we had finished working with the planning and development department on, um, on, a, on a document uh, basically going out for bid um, to be able to have uh, a transportation plan, if you will. Um, that plan would identify the trails and really focus on connectivity throughout, throughout the, the city itself. Um, That's so that, the active transportation plan, right? That's what they call it? Correct, yes, sir. Okay. Um, so I know, uh, I know Julie and her team was, was working on finishing all of the documentation up that's needed for that. And I believe uh, if it's not out for bid, it's gonna be going out for bid very soon. Um, and so that would probably be a, a year or so long process. We'll, we'll have stakeholder input and, and make sure that uh, the commission gets to have conversation with them as well. Yeah, I think that'll be an important thing to, for, the, for the commission to work on and have some input in because that'll sort of drive the rest of the trail development part of the, you know, that was part of what were the, I, I think, Actually, having an active transportation plan was one of the suggestions specifically yes, in the, the master plan. And uh, I'm just tickled that the city's decided to move that direction because I think that'll kind of uh, that'll kind of act as a catalyst to move that along a little bit. And I think, you know, I think we can actually see some. I, mean, I hate to spend a year doing a plan, but I mean, I think we need to do it. <laughs> Yeah, and from my understanding, there has already been some uh, some late work already done uh, from previous, I guess, documents. So mm -hmm. it's just a matter of, yeah. you know, kind of picking up the ball, if you will, and, and continuing to, to roll with it. Um, so the, it, it may be less than a year. The Paseo de, de, Paseo de Victoria plan, which is pretty cool looking. I, it's uh, Somebody found that thing, and, and I'm glad they found it, so that's good. So. <laughs> So we are, we are working um, to, to look at the trail network and expand our trails. Uh, one of the things too that I wanted to mention is that um, we have some funding in our, in our upcoming budget 
uh, where we have identified um, trail connectivity. Uh, when I say trail connectivity, it was some of the things that were outlined in the Parks and Recreation Master Plan where it expanded some, some sidewalks for uh, some of our neighborhood parks that we have. Um, so we're trying to add that into it, trying to get the ADA component taken care of. Uh, we also identified close to three quarters of a million dollars worth of um, projects for trail connectivity throughout Riverside Park um, that could ultimately connect the, the south side of the park to, I guess, the north side of the park. Oh, sorry, it just timed out on me. Okay, um, action 1.2.1 is parkland dedication. Amend the codes to require dedication and improvements in neighborhood parkland as part of new development. Um, again, that's gonna kind of fall back to the planning and development department. I know uh, they're working on updating their uh, codes. And so that has been identified in that as well. Um, and so whenever that project gets completed, um, we will, hopefully we'll be able to have a parkland dedication um, you know, backing in that in that recommendation plan. <coughs> oh, can't do use the clicker. Okay, number two was a maintenance plan. It's develop and implement an annual maintenance plan and long term asset management uh, maintenance schedule. Um, we're currently undergoing that that process right now. Um, right now, it's a little bit more uh, focused on our ball fields. Um, and so a lot of what we're doing is just trying to get an idea of, of how things were done uh, previously and what kind of equipment we may be needing to identify as, as either needing or, quite frankly, if we have it and it's not being used the correct way. Um, and so we are identifying those little pieces when it comes to the maintenance and, and ball field maintenance. Um, we have been working with some individuals to come in and teach our, uh, our ball field folks, um, how to do certain tasks uh, properly. Um, and so we're documenting all that information as well and trying to incorporate it within a maintenance plan. Um, so we are working on that. It's just, uh, it just, it's just taking a little bit. We are also looking at, uh, and that's up for a discussion a little bit later, is just to give you an update on the mowing over at Riverside uh, and some conservation areas, but we have been looking at um, letting certain areas grow a little bit longer uh, than others for that conservation piece. Action 2.1.3 is a conditions assessment. It's to conduct an annual or biannual conditions assessment uh, update. That's something that we already currently have with HAF. They provided that to us with the master plan itself. Um, however, we are looking at uh, incorporating some kind of a conditions assessment within our uh, playground inspection reports. Um, so that way it's not just focusing on playgrounds and the condition that the playgrounds are in, but also the park that we have, uh, that whatever playground is in said park. And then action 2.2.5 through 2.2.17, the near term park improvements, um, basically investing in any uh, property, you know, that we have near term and they have a whole bunch of recommendations. One of those recommendations was the sidewalk enhancements that I mentioned to you just a little bit ago about the ADA connectivity. Um, and so that's something that's already budgeted for this upcoming year. Uh, so goal three, um, only one more page after this, y'all, uh, promise. Uh, community programs and events, where's Kimberly at? Uh, so action 3.1.1 is particip participation data analysis. It's, it's to conduct an annual age segment analysis to ensure a continued balance of recreational programs across, across all age groups. Um, what we're doing is we've really started to kick up our recreation programming. Um, we're kind of, kind of in, a, in, a, in another process too of working with a recreation software system. So we're updating our recreation software system to um, it's a lot more robust, and so we'll be able to gather a lot more information, a lot more data uh, from that. Um, but at the same time, we're also adding some verbiage throughout some of our programs that ask certain questions about, you know, um, you know, what's your age and what are you interested in and those kinds of things. So we are trying to gather a little bit more data than what we had historically.
And last but certainly not least, um, Action 4.1.4, Park Security, invest in staff resources and refine park access policies to improve park security. Um, this is something that's obviously ongoing. Um, so what we're doing is we are, uh, again, budgeting for the sidewalk enhancements that's going to improve the security um, just with um, you know, people not even having to worry about walking out in the roadway. Um, we are, since we're going towards the end of our fiscal year, we are looking at uh, adding hopefully some lights, uh, some more solar lights to the MLK Park on the south side. Um, so anywhere we have an opportunity to add any kind of additional lighting, we're doing that. Uh, same thing with the dog park. I'm not sure if y'all noticed, but there is more lighting in the dog park. Same thing with the duck pond. There's more lighting throughout the trail system in the duck pond. Um, and so um, we are trying to be intentional when it comes to our new construction projects to add all that lighting into it. Um, another thing that we've been doing is we recently started talking about the RV park um, because the RV park is... Uh, it's attracting not the um, the best tenants that we've had. Um, and so we're looking at our policies right now and trying to update those and trying to see what we can do to ensure that we have, um, you know, good tenants that are there for the, for the what is it, three weeks? 30 days, for the, for the 30 days that, that they're going to be enjoying the RV park. Um, we recently went through... I guess a week or so ago, we had a couple issues with some of the tenants over there. And so uh, it kind of kicked that into gear of, hey, we really need to look at our policies, see what we can do about up upgrading and updating those. So um, does that include improvements to the RV park? Like, because it, you know, maybe it's the the aesthetics that attract a certain kind of people. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the, maybe the. Extremely low prices too. It's like one of yeah. the cheapest RV parks to stay at in the entire state. But like, it's also I mean, you get what you, there, right. there's not much there. They don't have a lot so of facilities. Right. It's like if you charge any more, mm -hmm. people are like, well, we've I'm talked about a lot more up the street for that same price. Yeah. So maybe some improvements could help that. We've talked about adding bathrooms and pools and things like that and, and uh, trees and yes. yeah, more. Propane, uh, <laughs> a lot of things and different things like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is that is a good point. I mean, um, so yeah, some of it would be you could call it technology. Um, I mean, we are looking at you know how do we how do we refrain people from coming in and out just just so you know easily. Mm -hmm. um, is it a gate? Is it those kinds of things? Some conversations um, that we had, you know, there was conversation about you know tree planting and trying to make, you know beautifying it a little bit more. Um, so yes, those are conversations that we are um, having currently. Is it, is it a significant source of revenue? No. No, not in the overall grand scheme of things, no, sir. I mean, it, it gets... It's, it's the honor system. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I've, I just uh, wonder if it could be something else. I mean, I don't... They're building this amazingly large trailer park out on the north end of town off of the... Yeah. I mean... It's humongous. It's, it's gigantic. Like a couple of hundred or something. Yeah, yeah. Like. It's insane. Is that the one by uh, Outlaw? Yes, uh -huh. Outlaw I mean, Pass. It seems like they've stalled, though, the last couple of times I've driven by well, it. Uh, the last few times I've been by it, it seems like they're moving again. So okay. it, it seems, it looks to me like, because I think they were framing up the building, and now they've got that thing finished. So it looks like it's, I mean, I don't know. I'm, yeah, the, the city yeah, RV the, park is known for not enforcing any yeah. of the posted rules. Uh, yeah, it kind of looks like a Breaking Bad episode. Yeah, that's what's going to scoundrels <laughs> in them. <laughs> can we limit the out. amount of days that it's like? Can we limit it's, it to seven limited. or because? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, from thirty, like. But that's not enforced. There's people there for six months at a time. Mm -hmm. And what what we find is, you know, we'll get people that come in over the weekend. Um, we don't see them until Monday, uh, or, or at least. So we have another administrative assistant who that's kind of her primary focus is the RV park. Um, so she won't catch it until Monday. And then, you know, there's times where we get payment for, you know, a week, week and a half worth of stay. And then, you know, next thing we know, it's been, you know, two or three days over that we're going and giving them notice. And then it's by law, I have to give them 72 hours before we can evict them and tow them. And so, by the I mean, time. there's, yeah. they, they, they start to know the process and they know how to, um, I honestly had to get free stay. Um, right. And so those are the processes that we're working on internally to try to fix that. And, you know, what do we need to do on our end to um, either make it harder or not, not 
let it happen at all. The last time I drove through there, there was probably 50% of the residents didn't even have license plates on their campers. I don't know how they how they transport them, but they do. Well, and I had a question. They from don't the, look transportable either. Yeah, and right. I had a question from someone in the public. It's like they did a drive. They were driving by, and they're like, "How does that person have a couch out there?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just I'm like, let me ask. <laughs> just let me. <laughs> Well, and, and that's that's quite quite honestly, I mean, that's why we've had those conversations. We've started to see an increase in the amount of trash, just debris that's being put in the dumpsters. Um, our staff has to go out there and physically remove it because the the trash company is not going to just just haul it with all the excess stuff sticking out of it. So we have to remove it from there. So that takes time. Uh, we've had people that have hit electrical poles and have damaged, you know, city property. Um, people who you know, move from spot to spot and then they're not paying. I mean, so there's just, there's a multitude of, of issues out there that we need to try to, to rein in. So what can we do to help you? I mean, can we, we I mean, we're, we're behind you and we, it, we all believe this solution right. needs to happen. There, and so it's, yeah. it's part of this master plan item. Yeah. Can we move it up in the queue? Can, what can, what can we do to help you? You're, uh, you're charging $15, is that right? Per day? It's 12. 12? Okay. So I think if we increased it to over 35, that's going to, because you can go, you can't get primitive camp for less than $35. So but to if, be, if to. There's no one to enforce it again. But I mean, right. I mean, but y'all pretty much can't enforce it, right? And then that's, uh, so that's going to shrink down your people and then limiting the time period, seven days. Why does anybody need to stay at Riverside more than a week? There's not enough to do in like, at Riverside for more than a week. That's, I mean, I just feel like state parks, they limit these things. Like uh, we should kind of try to follow what a state park does. And like I said, primitive camping is $35 in Goliad. And this is staying in an RV. That's probably like 45, 50 there. Goliad was, we were there two weeks ago, as a matter of fact, it was oh. 37 a night. Oh, okay. For an RV? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know what I'm paying. But. <laughs> Actually, that was in the state park. Do, 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 do people use the park to come uh, to visit Riverside oh, Park? I mean, is that, is that, a, awesome. I, is that have, a thing yes, that happens? I, I do, I do have people that kayak with me, like a, a some grandparents with their grandkid. Um, they came and kayaked with us, actually, and they wanted to do like a little guided ride. And they were saying that they come here every year and do this. So you don't want to make it unaffordable for them. So right. if it's $37, I guess, you know, we're not quite as nice as the Goliad State Park probably in that area, so maybe 25. But uh, but we see a lot of people camping out all throughout Riverside, like or trying to. I mean, even people that I guess are kind of moving around throughout town and then just kind of setting up their vehicle <coughs> and sleeping in their vehicle. We've seen a lot of more trash sure. lately as well. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, because we have to clean up trash every day before we can put people on the water. And then also the fishing, the fish guts and stuff, everybody's fishing down there. They're, they're getting their fishes and leaving them on the boat ramp. Like, so we're seeing a lot more people that are using it to, to eat, to camp out, hang out, and kind of live at Riverside. So, um, and I've been in there when they've had people come in uh, that won't pay their RV bill. And then they're trying to deal with that. And like, we're going to give you another week. But at that week, you need to be out of here. So it is a problem that they're having to deal with a lot. Like, we do need to help y'all. Like, we need to move forward with making some adjustments. <coughs> with that said, too, on our last workshop meeting, when we talked about this issue, we had all, I thought, kind of come to an agreement that what could you do, what could we do to help you get actual park security staff we talked, and I know that's a personnel item, and I know that's a budget item. Yes, ma'am. But at some point, is that the direction you'd like to see it go? Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I, I think that we um, could definitely benefit from a couple of park rangers um, throughout, you know, throughout the park. Um, you know, for instance, um, you know, police department has 300 calls of service to Riverside Park each year for the last three years. Um, so, I mean, that, that shows you there's a significant demand for, uh, you know, that's, that's once a day almost, you know. Um, in addition to that, the RV park, yes, um, would be able to, if we had a park ranger, that could take care of that security for sure. Um, Jason, a quick I, suggestion on that. Mm -hmm. A lot of RV parks, including the Goliad State Park, have what they call park hosts, mm -hmm. and they exchange free rent 
for someone to watch over it. And that, that kind of deters a lot of the, the activity we're seeing now right. at the RV park. Yeah. To have somebody there. That, that is a, that, I mean, that's a great suggestion. Um, that's something that, that we actually were just, just talked about again last week. I mean, there was somebody who actually reached out to us and said, I'll stay there mm -hmm. if you pay me and I'll take care of, you know, X, Y, Z. And so, um, I don't think that that's out of the question. It's just a matter of how do we how do we get to that point, either with the funding or with you know contracts or or what have you. And so, um, I appreciate y'all's support. I think we're not to a point to where I could formally ask y'all for any kind of support other than, um, you know, give us this next couple of weeks to try to figure something out um, policy wise. And if there's something major, you know, I definitely want to present it to y'all. But um, that's kind of where we're at right now, just the starting stages. I mean, we'd li we literally had our first conversation about this last week, last Thursday, I think it was. So, um, and, and a lot of that was just the, the very beginning stages of, hey, gra gather all the data and everything that you collect and all your policies and fees and let's sit down and figure this out. Um, so that's kind of where we're at right now. I had UHV over the weekend and they want to do primitive camping with y'all. Oh, cool. So, yes, and they were asking about, can we camp here? And I said, why do you think y'all need to get involved with Parks and Rec? So, <laughs> like, I should definitely get in touch and try to merge an event because they have some tents and sleeping bags, and I know y'all do, too. So yeah. maybe y'all could do something together Perfect. to bring more primitive camping because people seem to want that as well. I hear that a lot. Like, we'd like to camp, and I'm like, well, there's a couple events each year, and they're like, I don't want kid events. They want events that are awesome. scheduled with y'all as groups. Sure. So. Yeah, let's chat afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Um, all great suggestions. I appreciate it. Thank y'all. Mm -hmm. um, we'll continue to research some of that and, and uh, have our conversations. And again, I'll present something back to you um, at a later date. Any questions on the priorities? Thank you, Justin. Yes, Justin, that, uh, that looks good. Uh, looks like <clears throat> making progress. <clears throat> Um, item E6, discuss non-mowing and conservation areas. You made reference to this a minute ago, I think. Yes, sir. Sorry, I was just trying to find my... I just want to be sure we have a slide on it. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some trees trimmed along the river, so y'all have done some, some river cleanup. Yes, yes. yes. Um, so I, I wanted to bring this up. Um, for one, one of the commissioners, I believe uh, Commissioner Repka last time, wanted to bring this up uh, as, a, as a discussion item. Um, I know she's not here today, but um, nonetheless, we are looking at trying to, you know, to, to utilize the Parks Master Plan and use all of our resources as efficiently as we can. And so what we are looking at doing throughout Riverside Park is to have more of a conservation, you know, area, if you will. Um, and be more conservative in, in how we mow, how we maintain the parks, you know, all that extra mowing that we use, that's extra diesel, that's extra manpower, that's extra fumes going into the environment, so on and so forth. Um, so we want to be mindful of where, where, what we're doing throughout our parks and how we're, you know, getting an awesome park, right, um, with all the equipment and tools that we have available to us. So what I wanted to do is to show you a couple slides. This isn't in Texas, unfortunately. This was actually in Minnesota when um, we went up to a conference. But um, this shows you an area in, in a very nice park um, that has conservation areas with it, if you will. And I call them conservation areas because they're planted with the native grasses. They're there for a reason. Um, you can see kind of on the outline of it, you have a sidewalk. And then just to the inside of that, you have some planters uh, or some plants that are in a planting bed with mulch, and then you have trees. And then even on the inside of that, and that's kind of what I wanted to show you is the green area. That's all, that's all left alone. That's just all raw, right? Whatever nature provides, if it provides water, great. Um, if it doesn't, it suffers. Or maybe it doesn't because it's native. But we're looking at doing some things like this with it throughout Riverside Park. Um, quite frankly, I'd love to be able to do this throughout all of our parks if and when it makes sense. Um, but I can tell you as an example in Riverside Park, if you're at the children's playground area and between that and the Rose Garden, we have a big green empty space basically. We can't do anything there because of the history that's associated with that piece of property. But what we can do is we don't have to mow it two and a half inches every two weeks. Um, because that's basically what we're doing, you know, or we were up to not too, too long ago. 
Um, so we've staked out certain areas throughout that green space. And when I say staked out areas, we're not mowing those areas. We're, mow we're gonna mow them you know, once every other month, something along those lines. I think what, what would be great is if we could actually make that a wildflower area, then you'd have more pollinators coming back in. You would have different you know, food sources for you know, whatever creatures living out in Riverside Park. Um, so I just wanted to bring this up to y'all because this is something that we are gravitating towards. We are trying to be you know, mindful again of our resources that we have and, and limited resources that we have, you know, obviously with the rain and everything else. Um, oh, I actually have a clicker on this one. I can do that. No, I can't. So again, just a, just a quick picture of it, um, of what we're kind of looking at doing. Um, again, you can see it's, there's, a, there's a nice mulched area. It has, it's, it's heavily planted with, with shrubs. All of that stuff is gonna grow in. This was a newer park that they had just opened up, I think, within the last six months. Um, but all that vegetation is gonna grow in. And so you know, what we would be looking at is establishing some ground cover, um, whether that be flowers or just like lantana, for instance, um, and really not having a large uh, maintenance issue with it. Um, and then that way we don't have to mow either. We don't have to mow wall to wall. You're talking about like doing some sort of a buffer perhaps between the road and that area behind so that, you know, there's, it doesn't look like it's just been left to, uh, <coughs> correct. I see. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. And even if, if there's some areas, bless you, um, even if there's some areas that, um, that are along the river, you know, instead of just letting, you know, the grass grow up super high to where you can't see anything, maybe, you know, we do something over there to where we plant certain vegetation that only gets to a certain height and it helps keep the grass low, um, you know, because of the erosion issues that we have, you know, throughout Riverside Park. Um, but I just wanted to kind of bring this up to you because these are some things that we've been talking about internally, some things that we want to continue to move forward with throughout the parks. Um, but I wanted to show you that you can you can literally have a wild grown area like this that looks like it's almost out of control, um, but it's uh, it's what do they call it? Organized chaos, I'm right? Incorporated into uh, it. Yeah, but it, I mean it's it's right there within a heavily used park. Again, there was probably I'd say two three hundred people at this park that day, uh, running around like crazy. Um, nobody was getting into it. They kind of knew what was what it was for. There was some signage. I didn't have any uh, pictures of the signage, but there was signage out there that was telling you what it was. You know, this is a this is a nature area, and this is for X, Y, and Z. Um, again, helpful with the pollinators, those kinds of things. So watch out for rattlesnakes. Yeah, watch out for <laughs> rattlesnakes. The gator might get you. Watch behind you. You know those things. Um, this is a nature area. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but anyway, I, I wanted to, to convey that. That's what we're, we're trying to you know, establish within Riverside Park uh, first because it's such a large park and we spend so much time on it. Um, just wanted to see if y'all had any questions or comments or concerns um, with us moving towards something like this. Yeah, I'd like to see that wherever I, I can't see it. You know, I'd like, I, I don't think it's good looking. You don't I, like it like that? No, I, I think it's a good idea, but I don't think it's um, pretty. Um, you know, I don't want, I, I want to just, this is just my opinion, Sure. you know, and I, I feel like we're a lot of times due to money or resources, we take the short route here at the parks and rec. And I don't know if it's due to money or whatever. Um, but I just don't think we, sh um, in my opinion, should do things to save money that would mess up the way that, uh, visually the feel of the park, you know? As, as I'm just saying, in some of these tighter areas, like right next to the park, because you could have snakes, you could have things like that, you could have right. rats running out. Right. No, I definitely see where you're coming from. So not necessarily next to the playground, but just in maybe other areas that are yeah. kind of off the beaten path, if you will. Mm -hmm. That's that's. So yes, we would we would have it. So Riverside Park is a little bit more unique because you have so much water around it, and so you do have more of that natural, right? We have the nature trail, and we have all of those natural things to where yes, we would probably have more snakes or more potential issues with gators and those things. So we wouldn't do them there. Um, but I, I definitely I definitely understand where you're coming from. I, Jason, I like the idea, and I'd like to see the park staff go ahead and 
you know, identify areas where you think this would work. Mm -hmm. um, definitely on behind, behind Hiller House, all the way to the nature area, all the way past RV Park, you know, there are areas in there where the feral hogs get in, but there's areas in there I see you guys struggling, not struggling, but you're mowing, and it, overnight, overnight rain just kicks that grass up mm -hmm. so fast. And so I would like to, if, I would like to see you guys come up with areas inside the park where sure. you think this would work. And I agree with Justin, not necessarily next to high impact areas or right. high use areas. But there's definitely gotta be places where you guys could mow less, go with this. And then my second point would be, I definitely like the idea of a wildflower area. Mm -hmm. um, and is there grant money anywhere available for that? And the same thing with your idea to river with riverbank stabilization. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe there's some dual money there to stabilize the riverbank and uh, re to, to restore it, conserve it. You know, all those all those words. <laughs> right. You know, bank stabilization, bank restoration, bank restoration, and the same thing with conservation. Maybe there's some help out there to do that. Okay. I think this gives you a great approach because it gives you more. You can stress this, this area and more of a low risk area. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then plus you are also building your title for conservation, and then plus it blends in with the environment, but it's a, a, a more of a low risk area though. Right. I think that would be good. I liked okay. it all along that RV area because yeah. the only area that you're going to be anywhere is on the sidewalk, the path. You know, <coughs> when you take the trail, I'm riding my bike, people are running, they're moving fast, like uh, right. going off to the sides there, that would be pretty. Like to have wild flowers all throughout there, and if it's overgrown, it doesn't matter because we're not walking down there anyways. Right. We're not walking through the grass. I mean, assuming you're, I mean, you would do this, but you've got to keep your sight lines, you have to keep keep your security right. lines, and all that good stuff. But there's, I like the idea, and again, identify some, like a concept diagram or a bubble diagram, or where you think you can implement it. Okay. I have land and I keep my land like this during the blooming months because it's beautiful. And I like the way that it's overgrown and, you know, but, but then there are pathways and areas that are, are mowed. So that way, you know, you can see snakes and stuff like that. So right. I, I like the natural. And, and for your, life. you know, to your point uh, with the nature trail area and that AT, the Hiller house, if you will, back to the RV park. So those are some areas that we've identified where kind of, you know, we can keep it a little bit longer, but at the same time, we want to make sure that the pathway is shorter. So, I mean, that's where we would go in with a, with a lawnmower at two and a half inches, run maybe two or three passes on each side of the, of the sidewalk to make right. that walker feel more comfortable in case something does, so you know, happen to there. slither out across, you know, um, yeah. the walkway. It happens on the spring, well, I call it the Spring Creek Trail. What is, what is that? The one that's by Cimarron and everything. Uh, yeah. The, the trail that's by the splash pad yeah, yeah. and Colony uh -huh. and the Lone Tree. Yes, Lone Tree. Lone okay, tree. sorry. But um, I mean, there's critters that are on that trail all the time at night. Like, I, I mean, I see them all the time. There's there's critters out there too. <laughs> like, I take videos. <laughs> You'll have to ask Kimberly to tell you the story about that. I won't do that. <laughs> cool. Any other comments or concerns? Anything else? Mm -mm. Okay. Okay, um, we'll, we'll do that. We'll bring something back to the commission at a later date that identifies those areas. Okay, E7 is department updates. <laughs> a long night. Bless <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is like two meetings consolidated because we didn't have one yeah. last month. I'll go through this one quick, I promise. <laughs> right? Yes. Cool, we're good. Thank y'all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so uh, first and foremost, of course, our uh, agenda, right, is the Parks and Rec Commission, uh, Parks and Rec, Golf Course, Community Center, tour, Sports Tourism, and then some projects. Uh, one of the things that we were able to do, unfortunately, I wasn't there. I was at, at home taking care of uh, some family, but uh, we had a team building opportunity, and we took everybody out. And um, you can see this is the pretty much the entire department, minus maybe what a handful at the most, right, Jessica? Um, where's Jessica? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we had uh you know it's, it's it's the one time we we actually haven't done anything to this extent since i've been here um from what i hear everybody had the biggest smiles on their faces everybody was super happy uh, but i think we need to take opportunities like this and and really 
really work with our team and, and really get them together uh, because a lot of these divisions don't interact with each other on a daily basis. Um, so this was parks, this was recs, this is community center, golf course, I mean, you name it, they were there. Um, so this is close to our 47 full-time employees that we have uh, working for us in the department. That's great. And man. where are you right? guys? <laughs> Oh, we're at, they were at Outlaw Pass. So Kimberly, okay. Yeah. Uh, they went and they played putt putt. That's okay. Cute. And they they had a they had a really cool setup the way that they did that and everything and so they teamed up and they yeah they had a good they had a good time. Yeah, that's all I heard about when I got back. I like, Bragging or complaining? I don't know here. Um, so really quickly on the parks and parks and maintenance side, I, I couldn't get Richard off of there. I had to keep him on there. So I mean, it's just awesome to see a guy on a bike like that, right? <laughs> Um, so we have we did start our mosquito abatement program. Um, we actually went out last week full force and sprayed the entire city last week. Uh, we are monitoring the uh, mosquitoes with the with the trapping, and so we are using that mosquito abatement program that we had presented to y'all uh, a while back. Uh, we have, as I mentioned earlier, we have been working on the ball field maintenance, um, really trying to get a program put together. Uh, we had a really great um, event, Sombrero Fest, uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, and they had, I think, 50 teams out there. It was a, it was a huge turnout. We have continued to increase some of our maintenance items throughout the park. So we've been focusing on, um, quite frankly, that low hanging fruit, just the small stuff that is that has kind of been that eyesore that we need to get, uh, you know, taken care of. So, for instance, there was a couple poles that have been down for quite some time. Uh, they were around a um, a water meter. Those poles got put back up. They were painted, and uh, everything's looking fresh. And then we've been uh, implementing our uh, new parks and recreation software, which may not sound like a whole lot of fun stuff, and quite frankly, it's not, but, um, but it's really cool to be able to get everybody on the same page. So we're gonna have our RV park online. We're gonna be able to have um, our community center and parks and recreation on the same software system. So there's a lot of good things that are, that are gonna be able to, to go forward with this project. Our community outreach and collaboration I thought it was a great picture, so we got to keep all three of those folks up there. That's an awesome team. That's your recreation division. Um, so some of the programs and events that we've had over this past couple of months, actually, uh, been Art in the Park. Uh, that was over at Ethel Lee Tracy. We've had a tennis clinic. That tennis clinic, I think, was, I mean, they signed up for it in like a matter of seconds, I think. Um, so Gabby, the young lady on the left-hand side, um, she's our she's our tennis uh She's our tennis person, so she absolutely loves tennis. I think she went to college for tennis, so Jason, she's stoked about that program. Sorry to interrupt you, but yes, sir. Uh, we signed my daughter up for that. Uh -huh. and first class was last Thursday. It was excellent. It was awesome. Great. Yeah, great. It was a great job, and everyone was entertained and good and uh, held their attention, and it was great. Awesome. Thank you for that feedback. I appreciate sure. it. Sure. Um, so yeah. We just got a good review right there. <laughs> um, that a five-star review? That's five it. Star. That's a five-star review. Five <laughs> I'll star. let Gabby know. Uh, we had our toddlers on the trail, and we continue to have that. You can see the um, there's a small little clip uh, down there on the bottom. Uh, we've been having those uh, in, in, different, um, in different parks. Uh, we had a successful uh, dodgeball event. That was really cool. It was, a one, it was kind of like a one-time shot. It was a dodgeball. I don't even want to call it a tournament. It was a one-day a dodgeball like one day event uh, but it was over at the community center um, community park and uh, they had a pretty decent turnout for that uh, we took our pop-up park over to the victoria youth soccer organization they had a community event we took our pop-up park over there and then we had a trivia night over at the community center um, it's probably about three weeks ago something like that we had maybe 10 10 to 12 people that, that showed up for that but uh, yeah, Jessica went to it and she had an absolute blast. So we got another five star review sure. there. Uh, so stuff that's going to be coming up is uh, Stimtastic that actually is happening tonight. Um, sorry, y'all, I'm not. You're not going to make it. Um, but Stimtastic is is going on tonight. We had a senior crafts afternoon today. Uh, I'm not sure how that turned out, but I know that there was some, a lot of really cool stuff that we're working on. Uh, we are planning activities for the film festival on Friday, September 16th, so we're working with that organization. Uh, and then, of course, Christmas on the Square and Christmas Parade is coming up around the corner, so it'll be here before we know it. On to the golf course. Uh, these were the August stats. Um, so at the end of the last month, uh, we had $107,394 in some change. Um, for last month, we had 141 tournament rounds, 284 practice rounds for a total of a little over 3,000 rounds. 
Uh, some of the bigger events or, or events to keep your eye on or that have already happened uh, was the city championship that happened last weekend. Uh, I'm sorry, the weekend before last. Uh, we continue to have Thursday scramble. We have Pago on 910. And we are looking at a long drive contest, but we're not sure yet. So just wanted to throw that out there to you. As always, uh, golf course stats from last year and last month. Um, so we're doing really well on our golf course rounds. We're continuing to move up. Uh, so we're currently sitting at, well, at the end of August, we're currently sitting at 29,684 rounds of golf. Um, on our golf course revenues, we're doing really well there as well. Uh, we're about 1.2 million as of the end of August. Um, our revenues did dip down a little bit in August compared to last year's August, uh, but that was really due to the rain that we had. Uh, there was a lot of cart path only days, and so um, I was talking with our golf pro earlier. I was like, "Where did we? Where did we lose out six grand?" And it was also 103 degrees. Yes, very true. <laughs> That's what I thought. I was like, "Is it was it too high?" He was like, "No, it was just there was a lot of rain." Oh, okay. That makes sense. Probably makes more sense than just being it's hot. hot. So our beer sales would have been up. And I, I've never known, just a, a quick one, that yeah. they don't really have too much uh, advertisement for the, the golf course, uh, right? Even though I kind of operate like an enterprise, I've never seen one of those commercials like, come enjoy the beautiful greenery at <laughs> yeah. Riverside Park. Where they, you know, the, something like that. Yeah. Perhaps that could uh, enhance the... Yeah, that's, that's that something that we've been talking about is the marketing, right, with the sports tourism and the golf and the community center and trying to, because community center doesn't even have anything that, that they market, like even on social media. So uh, that's a good point. We'll, uh, we'll continue to look at how we can market that a little bit better. So what would you say the utilization is of, of the golf course in, in terms of what it could handle and still be, you know, a playable course and all? What... Man, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, Rolando and I came up between 35 and 40,000 rounds is where we wouldn't want to go past. I see. Um, okay. And that's just due to. That's for a your, month? Your, uh, I'm sorry, per year. Okay. So per you're, year. Oh, so you're yes, roughly sir. 30 now in August. So that'd be. You still got. Yeah. Got your good months coming up, too. September, September yeah. and October. Well, and this will end. Um, so these stats that I take is for a fiscal year. Um, so this will actually this will actually end in September at the end of this month. So next so, month okay. you'll see a full a full year worth. So you do really have more. We do have more room to yes sir to, to grow that. Okay. Yes sir. I hear my friends say sometimes that they have a hard time getting a tea time. So that sounds like you're pretty busy. I'm, well, that's. That's good to know. I'll, right? <laughs> but they get in. I'll, but. I'll talk to Rolando about that. But, yeah, so, so that's the reason why we added the 20 carts last year um, okay. is, to, is to help with that and then help with the tournament rounds. And, um, quite frankly, you can see the, the uh, increase um, in go just in golf rounds, and I think that's attributed to some of those, those additional carts that we've had. Uh, so the community center, they haven't been as busy as they as they usually are, uh, but we had 10 non-city functions um, out of 12. We had one uh, meeting take place um, and then one event, and that was the uh, trivia night that we had last month. For sports tourism, these are a couple of the things that are um, happening or already have happened for the month of September. Um, some of the things that I just want to pull your eyes to are, are what we're currently working on. So we're working with somebody here um, <laughs> on, a, uh, uh, on a paddle race. So Riverside Row, we're looking at September 24th, um, working with Flow Paddle. We are looking at a five on five soccer event uh, to be taking place at the end of this year and then again in the first part of next year. Uh, of course, we still have the Winter Games of Texas for TAF that we're working on. Uh, so we're looking to expand that. I think we've got uh, a couple more events than what we did last year already in the books. Uh, Michelle, our sports tourism manager, um, she's at TAF uh, this week at the annual meeting. So she's basically presenting all the information, that all the data that we have from our event uh, this past year. Um, one of the things that Michelle is going to be working on is assisting us with the Parks and Recreation Facility Assessment. Uh, that's something... I, Pretty sure I mentioned it a while back, but uh, really to look at all of our facilities that we have within the parks and recreation system, all of our um, stadiums, the golf course, um, just trying to see where we need to, to, to grow. Um, with that, we're also looking at uh, having a market study done on some of the sports uh, that we have here within the community. So again, what we should capitalize on and what we have gaps in service on. 
I yes, think sir. a Parks and Recreation Facilities Assessment could be great as one of those when they did the when they did the QR codes and they were doing oh, yeah. uh, something like that. Because I don't know, Michelle, I don't know, think she's, um, well, does she play sports one and is she familiar with Victoria's uh, uh, facilities, you know? Right, so. Um, so, so that's why I think the QR could, could go far. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely, I mean, that's a great idea with the, with the QR code. Um, so yeah, so uh, Michelle is uh, from the area um, and she has kids that are, that are in the sporting events. So I know she's familiar with it from that aspect. Um, I'm not sure if she's played sports before. I'm, I'm sure she's a, played sports. Because we haven't had a facilities assessment in how long? Uh, to my knowledge, I don't think we've had one. And there's been, and I know that people have complained for years and years of various facilities. Maybe this could be an opportunity to, to be heard. Absolutely. And it, I'll probably touch base <coughs> with you um, once we get this kicked off because we are planning on having some stakeholder meetings and I know you're tapped into a couple of those groups. So um, see if we can get some additional information from them. And then we are, uh, Michelle has been working on a sanctioned adaptive tennis tournament uh, that's going to be coming soon. So I know she's working with the Challenge Athletes uh, Dream Complex uh, organization. So just a friendly reminder to step up your game. Um, dog park. Wow, this is not looking good on here. Um, so the dog park, if uh, for those of you that weren't there today, um, we had a groundbreaking ceremony for the, I'm sorry, the duck pond. The duck pond. <laughs> duck pond. Yeah. We had a groundbreaking for that one too. Um, but the duck pond, yeah, so the duck pond uh, was today and I appreciate y'all for coming out. Um, uh, we're gonna move forward with that one and we should be wrapped up by October of next year. So we're super excited about the duck pond getting finished. I'm super excited for it. Just there's a picture of it right around. there. Yeah, there's a, there's a picture right there. Um, the dog park, however, um, I mentioned earlier, we published the, the bids today. Um, hopefully we'll be able to present uh, city council with a contract on that uh, in October. And then that is a uh, four to six month project. Uh, the multi-purpose fields, we have been working with Fielder's Choice. They're finishing out those fields. Um, they actually started installing some irrigation lines. Uh, you may recall that there was a uh, one field that was still left to be built, and that was a U-12 field. Uh, they're currently working on that one and should have everything wrapped up um, here within the next month. Um, Ted B. Reed Playground, wanted to give you a heads up on that. Uh, we are replacing that playground. Um, our, um, the organization or the company that we're working with uh, notified us that everything got shipped early, which is a good thing. Um, so they'll actually have all the materials on site on the week of October the 17th. Um, as a cost saving measure, the city uh, is gonna go ahead and remove all of the um, existing play equipment out there. Um, we'll probably start that at the beginning of October, but nonetheless, we're gonna be working with communications to notify the public about uh, us removing that and kind of the, how long that process will be. Um, once they start putting in the new playground, it shouldn't be any more than one month after they start, uh, barring any kind of weather. And then just some other projects that I wanted to make you aware of because a lot of times we just hit on the big ones. Um, we do have uh, a new uh, fencing uh, that went in over at Ethel Tracy Park Playground. Um, so that is gonna help with um, kids running out into the road. Hopefully they have another obstacle to go around or go through or go over. Um, so that got completed, I believe, last week. Um, we are uh, continuing to work on Ethel Lee Tracy Pond, really just um, trying to make the water level consistent. Um, and so we're working with our water department and engineers on that. Um, we do have, I know splash pads have been an issue, especially the one over at the community center we haven't been able to fix. Uh, at the end of this year, we're able to uh, find some funding. We moved some money around and we have purchase orders issued out with those contractors and contracts ready for them to repair Ethel Lee Tracy as well as the community park splash pad. So all that will be up and running uh, for the beginning of next uh, playtime in the summer. Uh, Riverside Stadium improvements, we have some, uh, we're not done yet, we've got a couple of areas of chain link fencing that's going to be refurbished and we've got um, some painting that needs to be done over there. I have park rules signage on here because honestly we don't have um, all of our play signs up to date and so that's what that is about. Uh, it's about $6,000 worth of playground signs that are going in throughout all of the parks. 
And then parking lots connectivity and, and uh, entry signs that were all identified in the master plan. We're working with our engineering department on that. Um, I mentioned to you earlier some of the sidewalks in ADA, all that has to go through engineering. And so um, we're, we're gearing up for those projects. With that, that's all I've got. Wow, okay. Was that the last one? Was that the last thing on the agenda? <laughs> I hope so too, because I can't talk anymore. <laughs> well, that, that brings us to close to the bottom of the agenda, but we, we still have future agenda items. So let me ask the commission if there's anything for the future that anybody would like to talk about um, in um, for future agenda items? If there's not, let me note that uh, tonight is Stephen's last commission meeting. We're going to be, you're going to be rolling off. We're going to miss you. You've been, it's been great to work with you and thank you for all the time and effort you've contributed to it. I think Mr. Hayek is here. I've, uh, he, um, uh, He'll be joining the commission next month, I guess. John Hyatt? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm glad to get the opportunity. I'm sorry, Stephen. <laughs> I really didn't know uh, who was applying and, and so forth, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to get the opportunity. Well, we'll look, we look forward to welcoming you, John, and, okay. and, uh, and uh, we, we really do thank you, Stephen, for all your time and effort. and. Uh, so we've just, you know, we keep on evolving around here, I guess. And right. so that's the that's thing. Has anybody got anything else before we adjourn? Go ahead and make it a full. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the doors. Just don't go Try all the way to 7 o'clock again. Anybody got 14 all right. minutes worth? Well, <laughs> leave the doors open. <laughs> With that, we're adjourned. All right. Thank you. Everybody have a. Nice meeting you. <laughs> <laughs>